Hi, PRISM's families. This is Barbara Haas Gibbler from Geisinger's ADMI in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, director of the Smith McGinnis Clinic here at ADMI. So, what I'd like to do for you today is do a quick overview of some ideas for supporting your child with Smith McGinnis at special times such as this. Well, I want you to first start off with knowing that, you know, we are here for you. Your PRISMS community knows that these are really challenging times for you and your family. And it's challenging for families with children, typical children, no less, are children with Smith-McGinnis who really are um, more challenging in many, many ways. Uh, I'd like to direct you also to look at the PRISMS website. There'll be frequent um, resources sent up for you and Rebecca Foster's resources. Um, there's a link for that and she's got some fantastic, uh, really nice, valuable strategies and resources for you and your families. First things first is really caring for yourself. And I know there's a lot out there on the web and different suggestions such as this. And, you know, I definitely know that this is something that we even talk about as teachers, providers, or parents of people working with people with Smith McGinnis, that you really need to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before helping other people. There's a really a good reason why they say that on the uh, on the airlines when you're getting, you know, just before you uh, take off. Finding a way to carve out even 20 minutes for yourself a day. Many of the other websites will suggest parents get up early. Well, we know with our people with Smith McGinnis, that would mean you'd maybe have to get up at three or four in the morning to be up earlier. So potentially for you, it might be to stay up a little later. Some people find yoga or meditation um, very relaxing. Um, others, such as me, sometimes like to watch Netflix, uh, watch a, a show, and just kind of try to relax and just think of things other than the challenges that we're dealing with day to day here. In terms of checking yourself, you know, with, we know very much our individuals with Smith McGinnis really pick up on our fears and our anxiety. And obviously these are very anxious times for us, but um, just when answering your, your child, really being honest, but giving just the right amount of discussion and information about the issues. In response to questions such as, when can we see uh, my friend from school or when can we go out to dinner? Not sure, but everyone's got different circumstances. But I think that rather than say the date that the school might have given, because that's changing day to day, um, it is, or I don't know, which is probably more um, anxiety provoking, a response such as not for a few weeks. This way, we're not giving a calendar date where some of our more savvy individuals might just start, you know, obsessing and looking at the calendar and looking at that date. Your child with Smith McGinnis and his or her siblings may mirror your feelings. So that, that's where we're talking about keeping yourself in check. Um, watching the news or reviewing the updates privately as much as possible. I think that that's very um, helpful. Preparing yourself. You know, each day is going to be a challenge, as it really is every day with a child with Smith McGinnis. But in this case, you know, equally um, more important for you to be really planning and having a schedule that are in place. Uh, you're not a school, but I know many par parents and families find that they find using a schedule really does help even on the weekends. So, you know, something along the lines of the weekends is what we're thinking about. Getting dressed for the day, um, setting the example for your child and your siblings. So getting up, you know, wearing something that you might have worn to work or just, you know, put it, setting the tone for the day. Having thinking about special activities, and I'll go into those in a bit, and you know, really thinking about during the day, mixing and varying the levels of activities, meaning sometimes being more sedentary, other times getting up and moving, getting a little healthy exercise, and if, if it, weather permitting, a, a walk outside, or um, you know, of course, with social distancing having healthy snacks, because as we know um, our, for ourselves, I think, and for our children, when we're home more, snacking becomes more of a um, desirable activity. So, you know, just thinking of healthy snacks to have in, in place and having, like I said, your schedule for each day. Expecting questions. You know you're going to get questions and just having, like, prepare your answers. And as I said earlier, giving that just the right amount of information. Taking note that many of our children and adults with Smith McGinnis seek attention and medical attention in highly charged emotional settings are really right up there as the top 10 in the top 10. So 
realizing that sometimes these um, you know the, these these emotionally charged events and such could end up becoming you know really a trigger for an, a meltdown for the child because they start talking about it and getting engaged in a conversation back and forth. Limiting the sight of items that are um, reminders of activities or outings that are not available. So, for example, if your child's not having schoolwork at home, you know, or uh, just put the backpack away. If there are certain activities that you you can't go to. You know, just putting those things out of sight for now because they're really not available. Schedules, you know, so we talk about schedules and why do they work? It's because they're familiar. Most of us, and we, we need organization. We need some um, to keep ourselves grounded for the day. What are we going to try to do today? Um, what are our plans? They're familiar. Whether the, whether the way they look are different for children and adults but many of us do rely on our schedules. Some of are on our iPhones, uh, some of the kids have them on their iPads, but they are familiar. Schedules decrease anxiety because you can actually can see what's happening next. Uh, when you're anxious, you're not thinking as clearly, so looking at something in front of you, like a visual schedule will help you understand what's happening for the day. It helps with predictability, not understanding this comes next. Um, oftentimes, too, if a person becomes um, repetitively asking questions about what they're going to do or what's coming next, you can, you know, answer and then also then point to or say, oh, let's go look at that schedule. It helps move along the day and um, especially transition from one activity to the other, which we know transitions are difficult for our, our many of our children and adults with Smith McGinnis. But this can show you that, you know, I might be doing something now that I'm not enjoying as much, but oh, look what's coming next. So making sure that that is, um, that is available. Some children are readers. Some use, you know, pictures. Depends on your child. I think that's very important. We've noticed with some of our children is that don't get too locked in with time frames on the schedule because then you have clock watchers or people watching or if the time, if they're watching a um, digital clock, they're actually like counting it down. So just like a, more of a a schedule that kind of goes through the day, get up, get up. Um, we think about don't have it look like it's all work, it's like a to-do list, so get up, um, eat your breakfast, you know, chill and watch one of your shows, then maybe get dressed. So, and maybe giving a little choice within the schedule to, the, to your child will help as well. You can use a whiteboard, paper, printed, computer, you can use words, icons, or pictures. You, may, you need to individualize it to your child's ability level and their interest level. I think about some of the visual and the environmental supports that could be helpful. Um, just as sometimes in a classroom, the, per the person with Smith McGinnis might want the teacher's attention, doesn't really want the one-on-one um, -on -one or the paraprofessional, sh how, somehow showing that that person's not available right now for you, or an item such as the computer is not available, just a sign you could make or print from off, um, offline picture with like an X through it. You could even let your child with um, Smith McGinnis give you, a, you know, let you help you make that sign. But, you know, making sure if there are two parents that are, or two uh, caregivers in the home, each of you may be um, trying to work free mode, which is very challenging. And so therefore they would know that I'm not available, but go check in with whoever the other alternate person might be. Making signs for areas in the house where you might do different activities could kind of spice it up, kind of like centers in school. Um, this is where we're going to read. This is where we're going to um, do crafts. Just giving some, you know, really just trying to give a little bit more um, individualization to the house. That's, the, you know, because it's going to be you know, inside many of us for, for some time now. With response to um, repetitive questioning, which we know is very common, um, I usually suggest and, um, you know, we really you know, first answer the question. So, the, you know, the question comes along, um, even just something is, you know, when are we going to have snack? You know, and you might say, you know, at, at 10 o'clock or in a, after doing something else. The second time the person asks the same question, I sometimes ask back and say, and watching our tone, just, you know, just say, what what did you just ask me and what was my answer? And have the person repeat it back that way. And then on the third time, I can offer to jot it down and answer the answer on a, on a card, index card, or a post-it. 
And then that could have a um, either a written word or a drawing, something that the person has a symbol that they understand. And so then when they ask the third time or the fourth time, you, they can look at that um, card. I had a young boy that always would ask me about going to the water and he ended up having this post-it and then he would ask the question like under his breath somewhat and he had the post-it in his pocket and he would read it back to himself and then put it away. So trying to do something like that, obviously, um, you, you really want to be able to answer the questions. Some other parents have found it helpful to say, you know, you, you can ask me one time in the morning, one time in the afternoon. It might be the same question about when do you think we're going back to school or when do you think we can go out to a restaurant or to a movie or a special activity. Social stories are, um, so, and there's like many ways that um, they've been adapted, but um, the, the Carol Gray is the one that is credited for, has initiated them since the 90s. Um, but there are social stories that are really can be very helpful to help your child to understand that times are, you know, times are different, different now, um, help them to understand what's going on. Um, so one that I, you know, you might think about the kind of the concept of is that, you know, staying at home, you know, trying to understand this. Well, you know, we've have to, we've stayed at home before, like on a snowy day or a power outage or when we're home on vacation from school. So this could be something that if you have siblings in the house that might want to help because they're having their own things too. And that's something that's always important. I meant to put in the schedule is think of carve out a little time that you can give time to um, siblings as well. Um, they could help to write or draw or select pictures and print them off the computer and the printer and the internet and then help maybe even read the story um, back with their brother or sister. This is the website for Carol Gray, socialstories.com. I, I do know that there are in fact some actual social stories there that are samples ready to go as well as lots of information and background about how she started this um, and how it's how it's been helpful. I did notice that it may be that a lot of people are um, logging onto that website that it was freezing up a bit, but um, there's a free membership and then you can get access to some of these um, Carol's, it's called Carol's Club. So check it out. Basically, like just in letting you know a little bit, social stories are short, personally written, child-friendly stories, and they describe the, the social situation. So they've been done for riding on an airplane, eating in a cafeteria, using, I had one for using self-flush toilets, um, all the many, many different things. Um, why we, um, you know, now this one could be, you know, social distancing. Um, why do we need to wash our hands so much? Um, they're written in terms of really relevant social cues and help um, give define what are the appropriate responses. They present information while minimizing the social aspect of the teacher adult uh, or the adult student interaction. So, you know, it's like when you see a story in print, it's a little less personal than um, actually, you know, than actually talking to the person and guiding them or helping them to understand these social um, in implications. They're written at the person's comprehension level. So I've done them with nonverbal children with just pictures. Um, if we use vocabulary, it should be at the person's level. The font, the print, and the illustration should all be in alignment. Um, positive language, a few sentences on, on each page. And once you come create one, then you can establish a, a routine and consistent use. If they're not effective, then you know either modify them or just say, well, this doesn't work for my child. I've even used um, PowerPoint and actually um, did, drafted some of the words with my person with um, Smith McGinnis sitting with me and then we picked pictures and we popped them in and then we could create a PowerPoint um, story and then it could be um, printed and or it could even be created into like a, a mini uh, webinar so to speak or a little video clip. Activities. So here's some activities. I was thinking about activities that I've done when I was a classroom teacher or a therapist working the homes with um, children and adults. So um, creating a few bins of materials and toys and activities and 
like you know, like a, a big um, Rubbermaid or Tupperware, Rubbermaid, I would think, bin. And then what you could do is alternate them on a weekly basis, like bin A and B, bin, bin B, you know, intermittently putting new things in that you might think of that, that come about. But this way, it's, it, it's less accessible and it keeps the novelty of the equipment and it, you know, kind of just gives it a little change up. One activity I've done is um, when working with a child and siblings or doing a, a, a when I've also had like play groups with children with special needs, what we did was we had each person pick a favorite activity for, for the schedule. And what we would do was jot them down, make sure they're reasonable and available, and then put them in a bucket or a hat. And then when we were picking our schedule for the day, we would just pull out something of the hat. So it might be that you know, mom, in this case, since we're home, many families are home together, um, each person in the family picks something and puts them in. So, um, you know, then everybody has a little time to do things that they like to do. Uh, we think of our people with Smith McGinnis, some of the funny things I've ever heard have been um, told to me or asked of me a, a, by a person with Smith McGinnis. So how about some joke time? You know, um, video the child with Smith McGinnis telling a joke. I think I've seen that on some of the Facebook postings as well. And then you can share them with friends or family. Just trying to get a positive slant on the day. Zoom or FaceTime virtual play dates or visits with friends. I know there's virtual trips to the zoo uh, as well. Um, some of the schools also have had um, planned activities or times when kids are going to see each other. This really helps with people thinking they'll never see their friends again. Probably good to have this on a, like a bit of a schedule so it's not um, too often or you know when another person's not accessible. Family member as well. As I mentioned before, check out your, your child's um, school website to see if there are regularly scheduled interactive events. Um, one thing that I noticed, and it was interesting, I had a, a child at, at the holiday time that really enjoyed unwrapping presents as much as he enjoyed the present. Um, so I was thinking of kind of taking two things at once. You could make a picture, you know, a very simple picture, color a picture, or make a craft. It doesn't have to be very... Um, yeah, expensive to do, something very simple, and then gift wrap it, and then you can put the person's name on it, and you can choose a time that you're going to have a little gift exchange. Um, I've done one thing that we did, like it was like a, we called it like a cooking camp kind of idea, so we had a theme such as um, if you give a moose a muffin, and what we did was we had the story, but we did a craft. We made a puppet, a sock puppet, and then we made muffins. So we kind of tied it all together. So it's kind of a theme activity that has lots of different layers. Um, just thinking about, you know, food, because some of our, our individuals really do like food. So and we need to help be healthy. So making some healthy snacks and then have the child help put healthy portions in baggies or containers for the next day or two. I was thinking with many of our individuals have lots of um, their hands are very dry and their feet. Um, so I, and with all the hand washing that we're going to be needing to do, probably making sure we have some hand, hand washing and lotion activities and try to make them fun. So if you have three or four different types of soaps or, you know, you could create a little bin and make it a choice of which one do you want to use, which soap or which lotion would you prefer to use today? Then there is also um, making a um, tent in the living room or a family or your family room. Some people have done like a picnic in the, you know, I, I think with some food, maybe a picnic for snack, like something like pretzels and water, something that's not too messy. Uh, but making a tent in the living room or the family room, when, you know, just kind of having make believe we're going on a camping trip. You could at that point too, you know, put the, you know, if it's dark, you put a flashlight, make shadow puppets on the wall. Um, I was thinking, too, was creating like a photo diary of, you know, the best or the most fun part of today was. Many of our kids and adults love their pets, um, taking a picture of the pet, um, doing something silly or snuggling, the, you know, something that could just really um, just kind of be a positive aspect of each day. Uh, treasure hunt in the house with simple cues, clues would be fun. So hide one thing. This would be to get up in the morning, be, you know, or the night before, set it up. But hide something, you know, and then kind of you could have post-its around that's, that would help the clues would guide the person from room to room to eventually to find the, the one item of the day. 
I, you know, used it, this uh, game with kids with uh, riddles. So hide a small familiar object or a toy in a cloth bag, and then you would give simple clues. It's something that you put on your keychain. It is something you, you know, you you like to snuggle with. Um, it has a nose and eyes. And then the person says, oh, it's my little teddy bear that I put on my keychain. So something like that. And that's a nice place too to engage um, siblings that might be able to help create the riddles and just um, can make it fun. And it's kind of a learning activity at the same time. Here are some resources for you um, for visual supports and charts. The um, because sometimes you know you know we want to we don't want to make it a major behavior chart, but sometimes we'd like to in, enjoy seeing some of these visual charts that could help. Or if first this, then this, some of the things that model what your your child's teacher in school might have done for them as part of their um, school um, program, because those visual supports and charts really do help. I want to you know thank Prisms and all of our Smith McGinnis families and let you know that as i said in the beginning we're, we're there for you we we appreciate the, the challenges for yourselves and your families and we, we hope that we will be there for you and keep checking on the website frequently to see different resources and hints for helping you and your families thank you so much thank you